What's up, guys? Welcome back to class. All right. So you should have started up a page of like civil rights era or the civil rights movement notes. This is going to be our other big theme going and kind of playing out through quarter four. Uh, now I'm going to get into like the actual civil rights movement and a lot of these big protests that are led by one of the most notable figures is Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, we're going to get into that stuff in the very near future, like before spring break here. And I'm going to give you some more things to add into your notes. But I thought a really good starting place, a very interesting story that really affects like just kind of culture and a lot of uh, something that a lot of people paid attention to was the Jackie Robinson story. Many of you have probably heard of Jackie Robinson's name before. Uh, he just had a movie come out about 10 years ago that was about his experiences uh, being the first black player in Major League Baseball. Uh, the movie was called 42. I'm actually going to have you watch a scene out of it today. Uh, one that's, man, it, it, it's almost kind of a rough scene to watch, but I think it will be kind of eye-opening to many of you uh, to see like the kind of racism and the there's the intense racism and the slurs and stuff uh, that Jackie Robinson faced when he was new to Major League Baseball in his first season on the Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, so you should have your civil rights era or your civil rights movement notes page started up with a big heading there. Uh, the first little bullet point that you'll add in or sub point, I'd say Jackie Robinson and then put a little slash 42 uh, because that was his number in baseball. And, and eventually um, because of what he did, he's a great baseball player. And because of the cultural impact he had on the country, uh, he 42 is the one number that's retired in all of baseball. So pretty epic story. And even though his story doesn't necessarily uh, get the ball rolling on a ton of protests and like legal changes, I think it is a pretty good starting point uh, for this unit because Jackie Robinson is a World War II veteran. Uh, and this has taken place very early on, really before the civil rights movement starts, but in the late 1940s. So here we go. Jackie Robinson, <clears throat> The basic rundown I'd want you to have for him is he is a World War II veteran. He, he served honorably, but his experience in World War II is a little different from what you might expect. You know, we, we've talked about guys like the Tuskegee Airmen that were a very uh, highly decorated squadron of black fighter pilots. And it had been long said, you know, kind of a lot of people in the military and in it, it, running our government felt like, well, blacks are mentally inferior and can't operate, you know, that kind of state-of-the-art equipment. Well, the Tuskegee Airmen totally proved that wrong. That argument kind of lost traction because they were one of the most highly decorated uh, squadrons in World War II. Well, Jackie Robinson was not a Tuskegee Airman. He, he wasn't a pilot. He was actually trained to be on a tank crew, okay? Now, remember, in World War II, the army is still segregated, so you don't have black and white soldiers serving in the same units. Uh, but in World War I, blacks were not allowed to see any combat. By World War II, black units do see combat, like the Tuskegee Airmen, uh, but they're isolated in their separate units. So uh, Jackie Robinson was trained to be a... Uh, a crewman on a blank black tank crew. Well, before he could actually get over and like fight the Nazis, he actually was still in the United States and the army was moving him around and, and the army actually had its own bus line that was not segregated because many buses down south uh, were segregated by race where blacks had to sit in the back of the bus, whites would have the front and middle seats. Uh, well, that was not supposed to be the case even in World War II. If you were on a military bus, it was supposed to be sold Soldiers could sit wherever, you know, first come, first serve. Anyway, uh, at one point before Robinson was deployed, he was going to get on a bus and a white officer had told him that he had to move to the back. Well, Jackie Robinson, a guy, I wouldn't say he's a like a feisty fighter guy that was like out there looking for conflicts. Uh, I don't get that vibe from his life or what I've read about him at all. But he also had a strong sense of right and wrong and justice. And he knew that was not the policy for the bus he was riding on. And it's kind of a BS policy anyway. So he he disobeyed the order and refused to do it. Well, he ends up getting arrested and court-martialed for that. Uh, now, it gets thrown out. A, a panel, actually, of all white officers reviewed the case and ended up letting him off the hook because that was an unlawful order that was given. It wasn't supposed to be a segregated bus. Um, and I think he proved the point. Even if it would have been the policy, I think he's the kind of guy that was going to stand up for what he thought was morally right or wrong, okay? <clears throat> 
So that was his World War II experience. He is a veteran, but he never actually saw combat. And that's kind of the story behind it. That story got to uh, Ricky, who I'm going to skip ahead one slide. That's uh, this white guy sitting next to uh, Jackie Robinson. Branch Ricky is also a key part of this story. He was the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Okay. Um, and for Jackie Robinson to get involved into pro baseball, it didn't matter how good he was. There were a lot of good black players and in, in like they would call it the Negro League at the time, uh, which is an a alternate professional league that was only for blacks. Uh, he could have been the best player in the world. That doesn't mean he would get in major league baseball back at this time because Blacks weren't allowed in the regular white major league, uh, but there was no ironclad policy that said you couldn't. It was just that was tradition and how it had worked. So in order for him to actually get into the league, it had to be somebody else. I, I, it would have to be a white guy because all of the general managers and owners of baseball teams were all white men at that time. Uh, you had to have one of those guys have some courage and stand up and actually break this unwritten rule. Well, Branch Ricky was that guy. He's a super, he's a very religious Christian dude. Um, and he has a very strong sense of right and wrong and morals and ethics. And I think Jackie Robinson and Branch Ricky both shared that. And he actually handpicked uh, Jackie Robinson to be the first black player on his team, on the on the Brooklyn Dodgers, and the first black player in Major League Baseball because they had that in common. And they were both like really uh, pr pretty strong Christian guys and had strong faith. Uh, they also, he liked the story about how Jackie Robinson had refused to give up his seat on the bus when a white officer told him to. Uh, and he also wanted somebody, he was looking for a player that was like even keel, that was not a hothead that was going to get in fights all the time uh, because he knew whoever he picked, whoever the first black player in Major League Baseball was, they were going to take, it was going to be a big controversy. They were going to take a lot of flack. And if that, player is going to be fighting all the time and yelling back and screaming, probably not going to go, and it's not going to play well to the general public and media. You had to have somebody that was even keel and, and a, had very strong character like Jackie Robinson. So I think the, Jackie Robinson is all obviously the main uh, key player in, in this story, but Branch Rickey is also an important character too. Um, he's a guy that you know was very progressive and forward thinking at the time, and did something that was not that popular, but he did it because he he thought it was the right thing to do. Now, back to my other slide with Jackie Robinson. I would want you to know for him some other key points you could put in. He is an outstanding baseball player. He's really, really good. He was definitely worthy of being in pro baseball because obviously if you just picked a a black guy that was not that good, but had a lot of character and moral standing and stuff and put him in there, but he's totally outgunned and can't compete. Well, that's not going to look great either. Uh, conversely, if you just pick a guy that is a great athlete, uh, but is also a hothead and going to be getting in fights and all kinds of other side controversies, that's not good either. So Branch Rickey, when he selected Jackie Robinson, I think he made a wise decision because he picked a player that was the whole package. He was a good dude. He was a family man. Um, he had that veteran background. He was able to stand up and have courage. And on top of all that, he was an outstanding baseball player. Uh, so another thing in there that just kind of sum up what I said there, but talk about how he's very courageous, uh, very even keeled, has a, a mild temperament. Uh, but th that's mixed in with a lot of courage and a really strong sense of morals and ethics. Uh, that even temperament is a very important part of it. Now, the scene that you'll be watching today, you're going to see this guy, uh, Ben Chapman. He's a manager for, or actually, I think he was the coach, not quite sure, coach on the field or the manager, something like that for the Philadelphia Phillies. This guy is kind of a scumbag and you'll get it when you when you watch uh, the scene that I'm playing for you. Uh, at this point in the movie, we don't have time to watch the whole thing, but I'm showing you a couple scenes out of it where uh, I think it, personally that this is maybe the most powerful scene of the movie. And it really, it's almost cringeworthy and hard to watch. Uh, but Jackie had been in pro baseball for a couple months. He had faced a lot of obstacles. He had taken a lot of flack from other players uh, on other teams. He actually even took a lot of flack from players on his team. Uh, but then if you ever watch the whole movie, which I would encourage you to do that if you have time, he also builds some relationships and makes some very powerful friendships of other guys that are on his team uh, that are starting to 
really question like the color barrier in baseball and just what are the societal norms in America back at this time? Well, when this particular day when uh, the Dodgers are playing the Phillies, Jackie Robinson goes up to bat and man, the, the opposing coach starts yelling all kinds of racial slurs and horrifically mean stuff to Jackie Robinson uh, while he's up to bat to try to distract him, which just trying to distract an opposing batter, well, maybe that's part of baseball. But the way this guy goes about it, it's vicious, mean, ruthless, and he was trying to provoke a reaction out of Jackie Robinson. So I want you to think of that. Like if you had been in Jackie Robinson's shoes and you were going to bat, um, would you have been able to be as calm and collected as Jackie Robinson was? Because you need to know that like what this guy was trying, what Chapman was trying to do uh, was go Jackie Robinson coming and swinging at him with the bat or having a fight. Because if that had happened, well, then in the media, the headlines would have been the next day. Nobody would have talked about the mean things Chapman was saying. Everybody would have been talking about it. It would have been front page news. that Hey, first black guy in pro baseball, he loses his temper. He's a real hothead and a fighter. You know what I mean? It's unfair. But that's how it would have been covered. Um, Jackie Robinson shows a tremendous amount of courage and just how he handles it and how he stays even keel and collected and just keeps playing the game. Now you might say, well, this guy is so mean and saying so many racial slurs. Why are they taking a photograph together where they're both holding the bat? Well, there's actually a lot of story behind that too. Um, because Chapman says all this mean, rotten stuff and it's like well-documented. Writers are writing about it. It's being recorded. Uh, man, that d actually totally has a backlash and does not play out how Chapman thought it would. I, a lot of average people that are kind of on the fence about this, that are hearing about it or reading about it from the comfort of their own homes, they really are disgusted by his actions. And they're like, my God, that's what a horrible thing. And think a lot of average people in America, they probably don't know anybody of a different racial group. You know what I mean? And this is before the internet and before TV. So if you lived in small town America, uh, you might be a black person living in a town like that, that knew very few other white people. You could have been a white person, uh, like one of my grandfathers living out on a farm and really not know any black people at that time. Um, America has changed a lot over the last few generations. A lot of, people, I think, across the board, see what happened to Jackie Robinson this time when he went up to bat and they're disgusted and horrified by it. And it kind of helps get the ball rolling and it really builds a lot of support for Jackie Robinson. Anyway, uh, because of that backlash, actually like this guy, the owner of the Phillies says, this doesn't look good. And he comes down on Chapman hard and is like, what were you doing? And he says, we've got to do something. We need to repair the team's reputation. You really damaged the Philadelphia Phillies by saying all of those rotten, nasty things. Uh, so they have set up a photo op where they're going to say, essentially, there's no hard feelings. Look, we're smiling and taking a picture together, which in reality, I think there's a lot of hard feelings. And neither one of these guys probably wanted to take this picture. Uh, it happened anyway. And it ran like on the front page of newspapers and a couple of big magazines. And uh, Jackie Robinson actually threw out the idea that, hey, how about we just hold the bat together? Because originally they said, let's have you guys shaking hands and making up. Uh, and Robinson put out, they said, well, you probably don't want to black hands, essentially, so we can just both touch the bat at the same time. Anyway, kind of a clever little thing and, and a very notable photo op where, you know, really in taking this photo, I think it vindicates Jackie Robinson's behavior in a lot of ways. Uh, and maybe he gets the last laugh out of this. It totally like discredits and just makes Chapman look like a rotten human being. Uh, and by the way, a short time after this, by the next season, he got fired from his position and was basically done with pro baseball. And Jackie Robinson, who's in his first scene when this, or is in his first year of baseball when this movie is playing out, he goes on to have an epic career and ends up becoming a Hall of Famer. Okay. So I hope you like this scene. I hope you, it's a very powerful kind of moving scene and it might be a little bit. Uh, cringy for you, uh, but I think it's good that you watch it. I actually edited two short scenes together, the scene where he's up to bat and the scene where after on, they, they show these two doing the photo op together. And then I'm going to have a follow-up Q&A question for you today. Uh, so after you finish these notes and added it on and then watch the scene from, uh, from 42, then uh, go answer that Q&A. All right. Have a good one.